Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. I think I'm recovered from Business Application Summit. We've got some awesome community posts and a new feature preview on the Power BI side. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Marco Russo's got a blog post introducing you to calculation groups from a DAX perspective. This was a new item that's released with SQL Server 2019 Analysis Services. It's also available in Azure Analysis Services, and at some point we'll come to Power BI. I have no idea when, but I can't wait till it does. Marco does a great job, as always, just walking through, starting from the very beginning to wrap your head around the concept using some pseudocode and some basic examples, and then walks through how to actually do this from an analysis services side of things. There's a lot of power in calculation groups and can really help you, especially the main example I've seen is time intelligence, but it can be used for other things as well. If you're using DAX, even if you're using it in Power BI and you're not using analysis services, it will be coming for Power BI, so I definitely recommend you start looking at this to understand how it can help you with your data models and also to reduce the number of measures that you're using in your model. Links as always down below in the description, along with all the links for everything I'm gonna talk about in this roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Matthew Roach posted a blog post looking at the customer story sessions that were at Business Application Summit. He put links to the ones that were available, and I highly recommend you go check these out. This is great if you're looking for examples that other customers are using to implement and deploy Power BI in the enterprise. I know for me personally, a lot of times I look for examples of how to do something, especially if it's something new that I don't know about, because I wanna see what other folks are doing, then I can incorporate that into my own decision-making process. And this is a great way for you to do that in terms of deploying Power BI in your organization, managing it, governing it. What are people doing out there? As Matthew puts it, deploying Power BI is a tactical item, but you need a strategy in order to do it, and looking at what other customers are doing can help you with that strategy. So definitely go check this out. Dave Rooster has an updated blog post about deciding between do I go Azure Analysis Services or do I go Power BI and Power BI Premium? There are definitely some differences between the two, and sometimes it's hard to figure out where should you land depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I thought this blog post was fair. I, there are definitely some aspects that would make you go Azure Analysis Services, especially if you want those really large models. And also there's some reasons why you may wanna go with Power BI. And also there's improvements coming on the Power BI side. A lot of that was highlighted in the future of Power BI session at Microsoft Business Application Summit. So the gap is closing. It's just a question of how long is it gonna to take to get there? And when do you need to go deploy? So if you need it today, your answer may be Azure Analysis Services, but later on down the road, it may be easy to just say, let's just go Power BI Premium. There's a lot of nuances. I think Dave tries to cover those nuances. There are a few things that I, I think are missing from this, such as if you want to do direct query to Databricks, which I don't necessarily recommend you do, but if you do wanna do that, you can't do that on the Azure Analysis side. So there's a lot of little nuances that I will admit is hard to capture in a single blog post, but just do your research, figure out what are those pros and cons, and then make your decision based on information. Hey, that's unique. Good blog post, Dave. Looking forward to the updates on the Power BI side to get us to that next level. Leela Atadi's got a blog post looking at introducing Charticulator to you. Maybe asking, what the heck is Charticulator? Charticulator is a way that you can create custom visuals for Power BI without knowing how to code. So it's kind of like a UI where you can drag and drop things and align data and whatnot and create that custom visual that you can then use inside a Power BI desktop and potentially the Power BI service. I'll be the first to admit that Charticulator is not the most intuitive thing to use in the world, so I'm happy to see folks are actually starting to latch onto this and promote it and do some training, tutorials, things of that nature. So kudos to Leela for putting this blog post together. This is part one, so I'm sure there's gonna be more blog posts that go through a series and actually get you to that final destination, so be sure you're following that. Bring Your Own Key is now in preview for Power BI Premium. This is actually pretty big. I know that there are some enterprise customers that are absolutely looking for this feature. The idea behind Bring Your Own Key is the fact that you can bring your own encryption key for data. So typically with cloud services, there's a rotating key under the hoods that gets generated and managed from an Azure perspective. 
And there are other services out there that allow you to bring your own key as well. And so Power BI Premium now is one of those that allows you to bring it. This is in preview, so definitely looking for folks to check it out, provide feedback to the engineering teams, and take it for a spin, see how it works. This is also a great feature that will help you from a compliance standpoint with using Power BI service if your organization has security restrictions and things of that nature. Again, links for everything down in the description below, so be sure you check that out and all the bonus items that are down below as well. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let's continue the conversation. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time visiting Guy in a Cube, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.